Welcome tonight. Welcome tonight. It's interesting. I'm trying to see. Okay. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I'm glad you are here with me. And I welcome you in the name of the Lord. I welcome you. I can see my sis Ohima. I've missed you so much. God willing, I will be seeing you very soon. Sis Krampa, I welcome you. I am happy to see you here, my big sis. Clinton, God bless you. Um, Emily, God bless you. And all that 
my brother in the lord god bless you for being here with me i i i appreciate you all and we are doing the work of the lord what he has given us to do that is exactly what we are doing and i acknowledge you here auntie beatrice ah my brother is here nicholas god bless you god bless you for joining me tonight and uh, nanajua God bless you, my sis. Thank you very much. Wherever you are, I'm sorry I was late for a few minutes. Why don't we lift up our voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord, exalt him and acknowledge him. Ask him to take absolute control tonight in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the horses, they are trained and ready for battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. And so lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. And I promise you, if you can just share this word, and yes <laughs> we are fired up yes yes if you see ezekiel you know that this is mystery we are learning about the mysteries of the lord tonight so don't miss this tonight for anything in this in this world just share this broadcast and wherever you are just begin to lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of the lord and invite him to have absolute control in the mighty name of jesus christ Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you all the honor. We thank you. We acknowledge your presence in this place right now in Jesus' name. We ask you to take absolute control in Jesus' mighty name. La baso kadaha. Shiande de 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 de. Le masiande da da ba. Shiande ba kasiande kesiande. Raba da bla pa ye masiande de de. Ye de baso kadaha siande da ba. Le masende kesiande ba kade bla pa. Shanda ba Forja has together, O Lord, to receive of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Ye de basian da da da. Ra de ble papa pa. Shianda baha soke de ba. Ye de basianda da boko shiende baha sianda. Ye le bla pasiande de bacada bla pasoka da da da. Yada basoka da basiande de beke de bla pa. Shande de de le masoda ha sianda da. Ye de basoka da da da. Ye masianda da da. Yada basoka da da da. In the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, you are welcome in this place. I can do nothing unless it is given to me from above. So have your own way tonight in our midst, in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome you in this place, Spirit of the living God. Have your own way in our midst, in Jesus' mighty name. No more of me, nothing of me, Lord, but all of you in Jesus' name. All of you in the name of Jesus. Reveal the hidden truths to us, O oh Lord. Correct our paradigms in the mighty name of Jesus. Shanda baha soka daha. Ye de blasian de hesien de he. Rada ba soka da da da. Shande baha siam de de beke de blapa. Let your word come with power in the mighty name of Jesus. Shande de 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 le brasian da ha soka daha. Ye de blapa siam de 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 de. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. And we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus take the the wheel lord spirit of the living god take the wheel in the name of jesus we are ready to receive from you yes lord in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen i salute you my prophet <laughs> thank you for being here with me and uh, my brother Kuku, don't go anywhere you better come here i am happy to always see you here pastor alex god bless you auntie Anne, god bless you for joining me tonight and i can promise you that this word is going to be a blessing for you because it has been a blessing to me even as i study it and we are going to study something from ezekiel aha uh -huh. please stay put <laughs> mr abaka don't go anywhere stay put i'm studying with you this is the word of the lord that has been a blessing to me and in this season that we are in i i am being prompted to let us know that we have been equipped in our spirit man to overtake 
we have an overtaking anointing but when you realize that this is what god has given you then you cannot settle for anything less so if you have your bibles <laughs> i i this one have your bible and then you will know that it is in the word of the lord we are going to study something from ezekiel chapter 1 through to chapter 13 it is an interesting study and and i know that most of you are familiar with these with this particular verse so before i go in let me just lift up my voice and pray and then we study the word of the lord so heavenly father i thank you tonight for your word it is a privilege and it is an honor always to come once again into your presence with this with this brethren to study your word you know it says that a moment with you so we are ready for you to download unto us what you want us to know in this season of our lives so spirit of the living god take absolute control speak through me i am your vessel take me and do what you want to do so have your own way tonight in jesus mighty name amen and amen it is so interesting that Ezekiel is, is I was, I thought Ezekiel was a prophet, but as I studied, the Bible says that Ezekiel was a priest and you know, the priest and you know, the prophet. So for God to reveal this kind of visions to a priest in that, that season that they were in should tell you something that prophets were not there at that particular time. And you know that throughout the the the, um, the the Old Testament, God mostly speaks to his prophets. He sends his prophets as judge. He plays the prophets as judge to speak to his children, to direct them, to, to let them know the mind of God. They inquire of, from the prophets what God is saying. But Ezekiel find him, Ezekiel as a priest of God, found himself in a position they were being exiled they were in exile and the bible says something and i'm going to read this story in ezekiel so please pay attention with me and then follow me as the holy spirit speaks to us and then he says that this is the vision the vision of the four creatures i'm reading from the king james version it says now it came to pass in the 13th year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month as i was among the captives they were taken into captives by the river of sheba that the heavens were open and i saw a vision and then then the verse one caught my attention the bible says he was taken into captivity he was amongst the captive the the priest was um, uh, was in captivity but even in captivity not he was not limited into tapping into the presence of god the bible says they were in captivity but the heavens were open they were by the river he he, he spoke of the time and the date they were in a specific place and the bible says that the heavens were open the heavens were open but interestingly i i i i just found that you know even as the priests were there he wasn't the only one there but when the heavens was open it was the priest who saw the heavens being open and the bible says this then the very moment he opened and it caught his attention he says that then he saw the vision hmm when it caught his attention some of us we are all here there are certain things that we can see but until god catches our attention it, the chapter is in ezekiel i'm reading from the verse 1 to 13 i just read the verse 1 ezekiel chapter 1 and then the bible is saying that when the heavens were open and i saw a vision of god it's like when we study the word of the Lord and the Bible says the word of the Lord came saying the word of the Lord comes and he says something. When we sometimes God opens the heavens, the, the heavens when it opens represents the presence of God. It means that God is ready to do something or to say something. And so anytime, even when you, you can hear the man of God saying to you, your heavens have been opened. It means that you have access 
you have been granted access so anytime you hear these words it is time for you to pay attention and be ready to behold what god is going to say to you and i hope that you catch this thing in your spirit because in this season that we are in we need to learn to be sensitive to the things of god and so god is telling us something that when you hear that the heavens are open behold there is something that i'm going to show to you and then to ezekiel he said and i saw visions of god when the heavens opened then he began to see what god was about to say to him you see this same verse we see this same verse in the book of matthew chapter 3 verse 13 and 17 and that was when jesus was baptized by john the baptist when jesus was baptized the bible says and the heavens the moment he came out of the water his heavens were open when the heavens opened he was the only one who saw the heavens being open all the people around him could not discern that the heavens were open hallelujah sometimes you'll be in a place some somebody's i i can't remember somebody taught um somebody says something and this has always been a blessing to me even when i'm in the place of prophesying and i say something i say and it's a blessing i say this one i even tap it and i receive it for myself because you know sometimes people are not so sensitive to tap into what god is saying and so you see the heavens were open unto jesus as this same heavens were open in the days of ezekiel the priest even though he was in captivity this is what the word of the lord said be sensitive in the season that we are in because you need to know that i can open the heavens i can my presence can be manifested in any place that there is holiness and there is righteousness thank you holy spirit when you sense when you you have consecrated yourself be well aware that i can manifest and open the heavens so that i can speak and relate to my people so be sensitive in this season of, of, of whatever thing that is going on in this world. And you see, even in Matthew, when the heavens were open unto Jesus, Bible says that angels and he saw the dove descending. I, I, for some reason, I think I always thought that the dove descending, it was even John and the people who saw it. But the Bible says it was he, Jesus alone was the one who saw that the the the, uh, the spirit had descended on him like a dove read your bible it's in your bible matthew chapter 3 verse 13 to 17. he saw it those around him did not see the spirit descending on him like a dove and then when he did that the bible says that and then there was a voice that says you are my beloved in whom i am well pleased somebody will ask why do why are you telling me all this this is to tell you that in this situation that we are in, you need to know what God is saying to you. You need to know what he's, he's prompting you that, hey, be sensitive. Don't let the things that are going on right now distract you from what I am doing. Because I am doing something. And if you are not sensitive to what I am doing, you might miss it and think that I am not doing nothing. We see the killings that is going on. We see how the black people are being, being um, um, harassed. You see um, um, these virus going on. And then every now and then you wake up, there is news of things that are, that are so disheartening. Families don't even know how they are going to pay their bills. People are losing their jobs. They, they are job cuts and all that stuff. So as children of light, as children of God, you cannot afford to go through this season of your life not hearing what God is saying. And this is what he is prompting us. He says that the heavens open, but it was not everyone who was able to tap into what I was saying. Even those people around, they could hear there was noise, but they could not discern what was being said. So be very sensitive in this season because anytime there is an open heaven, the presence of God is prevailing. Hallelujah. And then he says something. Yes, I think I have, exhaust, I have exhausted the first one. And then it goes on in the, we are going back to Ezekiel chapter 2. And then he says, in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth, 
fifth year of the King Joachim's captivity, the, the word of the Lord came expressly, expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of Chaldees, by the river Chaba. The hand of the Lord was upon him. You see, the very moment it caught his attention, the Bible says on the third verse that the word of the Lord came expressly. It came clearly unto him. When you get the, when you, you, when God gets your attention, when he opens the heavens, when he, when he's, he wants to say something to you and he gets your attention, the Bible says he will be clear to you. You see, this is the same thing that happened to Moses. The Bible says when he saw the bush burning and it was not being consumed. When he saw the bush burning and it was not being consumed, he turned to go and take a look. And that was when God spoke. In the beginning of that same verse, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord was the one who caused the fire. But the very moment he turned to his attention to the fire, he decided to go and see. That was when God came to speak to him. God is principled. God does not, he, he, he works accordingly. He doesn't change his, his way of doing things because or somebody or someone that is why he is faithful that is why he, he is dependent we can depend on him so he's telling us tonight that hey when you see me moving when you see the water staring let me get your attention when i get your attention i will speak to you clearly i will tell you what you need to do i will show you where you need to go i will guide you with my eyes so you see, he says, when the word of the Lord expressly came to him, then the hand of the Lord came. Hallelujah. Because he caught, God caught his attention and he came to God. He says that when the word came, the hand of the Lord came. It means that when the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him, the hand of the Lord was ready to equip me for what he is about to see. The visions that he was about to see, the spirit himself had to quicken him enough for him to come to the place to be receptive of what God was going to do in his life. So any time that God speaks to you, any time that God draws you to himself, be ready for him to take certain things out of you, to bring you to the stature of his son, Jesus. That is why anytime he is calling, when you look through the Bible, anytime he's calling his people, he asks them to consecrate themselves. He asks them to set themselves apart. And that is why sometimes it is very important that when you are moving from another level in your life, when you are moving from glory to glory, when there are certain things that are changing in your life, your friends begin to change. Your relationship begins to take certain things that you used to be comfortable in. You begin not to be comfortable in it again. Because you see, when the word of the Lord and your heavens opens, when God is beginning to do something to you, his hand will lay on you. He will lay his hands on you. He will make sure that he has taken certain things out of your life. So that you will make way to be able to hold what he is about to, to put inside of you. Because you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin. So some of you, you might not be understanding certain things that are going on in your life. But be ready. You were walking, but this time you are going to run. And if you have been running with those, you, 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 are tired, you are tired with those that are walking, how can you run with the horses? So there are certain things that you are experiencing. God is just making sure that he's taking certain things out of you so that you can make way, you can have capacity enough to receive what he has for you. Some of you have served the Lord for years and sometimes it seems that the things that he promised you, the prophecies that has come on you, it seems like it is being tarry. But this is the season that I know prophetically that God is going to make a distinction between the children of light and the children of darkness. So position yourself in such a way that you are ready to receive of God what he is ready to pull into you. Hallelujah. And so let us continue in something. And then he says in the verse 4, we are reading from Ezekiel chapter 1 and we are in the verse 4. The verse 4 says this, And I look and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. 
a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof was the color of amber and out of out of the midst of fire you see it's so interestingly that the bible says this that out of the process of that god has taken ezekiel with he said i looked i looked he's talking still about his attention when god called him he said i looked then i am interested in what god is calling opening the heavens for me to see but you see when god did this through the the life of the the priest this these are some of the things there are four things that took place in the verse four. First one the bible talks about a whirlwind a whirlwind and then second he talks about the great cloud and then thirdly he said and a fire began to unfold and then the fourth one he talks please let me a whirlwind a cloud fire and then the fourth one was an amber stay with me with this you see when we talk about the whirlwind the whirlwind comes specifically from the north he said that the whirlwind from the north the bible made an emphasis that the whirlwind that was coming was from the north when you look through scripture the bible says any time that god wants to send judgment to the children of israel they have become or disobedience the bible says that these people the judgment of god always come from the north it comes from the north the babylonians were from the north the assyrians were from the north when you look through scripture he says i'm going to sell my well my whirlwind from the north there are so many scriptures when you start seeing the anger and the re re revenge and the vengeance of God, it starts from the north, the whirlwind. And this is what the Bible says. In Job chapter 38 verse 1, the Bible says this, and then God spoke from his whirlwind. You see, let me give you um, um, uh, just a picture of what a whirlwind is. You see, when when those who are from Ghana, you see that that um, from, uh, that wind that blows like that as you round, you see a friend in Moti and Frama, it's, it's like that. Sometimes so strong and powerful, it will just lift you up and throw you somewhere. And just imagine that one from God in his anger and his wrath. And so he's saying that this is what I saw. Behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. In as much as they were in captivity, the Lord was still against his enemies. Hallelujah. The Lord was still against the enemies of Israel. You see, let me tell you some, somebody here. Get this in your spirit. That is why it is the Bible keeps on telling us that you do not judge for you will be judged when you are in the right place when your heart is right with God and God has his eyes on you. It doesn't matter the things that will come your way that seems to be against you. God has a way of protecting you. God has a way of keeping you in a perfect peace because you see the Bible has always says that in everything by prayer and supplication make your requests be known unto me when you do that it is my peace that will guide you in all the way that you should go the peace of the Lord that is the first thing he gives you when you are in trouble and so you see it is it is it is very very dangerous for you to even speak against a man of God or a woman of God or any person, a child of God going through things that you do not understand. Don't put your mouth on these people. Because you see, even here the Bible says that the children of Israel were in captivity, Jesus. They were in captivity. We were being locked down. People have lost their jobs. They don't know what they are going to do. But you see, the Bible says, even there, he visited his people. And there was a whirlwind. His anger, his vengeance was he there with them. And he was protecting them. So be very careful. And if you are also in that situation, keep trusting your God. Keep having faith in him. That is why this, 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 this season... I have been taking my time to do a devotional in the, on the promises of God. Letting you know that you see, whatever thing that you are going through, God is able to keep you from falling. He is well able to keep you in perfect peace. In shalom. 
nothing missing nothing broken he is well able to provide for you you and your family every single thing that you need i have testimonies and i'm just piling those testimonies the day that i will sit at uh, that day i will not do anything the only thing that i'm going to do is to put my testimonies down to encourage somebody and i will tell you and i will testify that you see even in this season I have continued and I will always continue to see the goodness of the Lord in this land of the living. Because you see, if God has given me his word, and this is what I always pray and I tell him. If he has given him, me his word to speak and to encourage you, then I have to be in the position to experience that goodness that I am talking about. So when I am standing here and I'm sitting here and you under the sound of my voice and I'm telling you this about God. That I am coming from the place that I have experienced what his divine mercies and his goodness is all about. And so know that the one that you are serving, he is not sleeping on you. Even in your state of calamity, even in your state that you think that all hell is broken loose, he is there with you. And he is protecting you in a way that you cannot see with your naked eye. If you can only see the angels that have fire around you and your family, my God, when you sleep, you will sleep. There is no one day that you go to bed with your children that you have no food on your table. Because God is faithful. You see, and the Bible says that his, the whirlwind also represent the north sorry the north also represents the seat of his divine power and i think i have exhausted this part and you can find that in isaiah chapter 14 verse 13 and 14 you see because he enthrones in power in authority when you see the north coming you see that god is seated in power in his divine power to judge your enemies Uh, the Bible also says that, yes, I, I have said the vision proceeds from the north. And it's also in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 19, and then 25 and 32. And it also represents the indignation. So let us continue about what it says. And then it says again about the, the great cloud. It was not just cloud. He said a great cloud. And do you remember that the Bible says that, I think in Hebrews, that we have such a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. And this Ezekiel is making us aware that we have a great cloud. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 9 and 6, the Bible says that God spoke to Moses in a great cloud. So that the Israelites could hear him, but they couldn't see him. When they were murmuring, God says, you let me come down and speak to them. So there was a great cloud. Anytime you see these things happening, you see these clouds are there. These clouds, these great clouds that we see with our naked eyes, they are there to protect us so that we do, we are not able to see certain things that we are not permitted to see. There are certain things that we cannot behold. Even some of us, we cannot read the book of Revelation. Because the, the things that are being said there, our, our mind cannot even comprehend it. I, for instance, it is just quite recently that God is giving me the grace to read it and to understand. And so it, it, it's, up, it's important that God protects some of us, our, 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 our spiritual sensitivity, our sensitiveness. How we can tap and understand certain things of the spirit. So these great clouds, they are there for our own protection. You see, the Bible says the things that have been revealed, it is for us. But those that are hidden, it is for the, the father. It is those that are being revealed, it is for us and for our children. But those that he has kept, it is for himself and for his glory. So you see, when the Bible said unto us that a great cloud... It says that it is the cloud that precedes the manifestation of the glory of the God of God. It is a hidden place of divine majesty so that we can only see what we can bear as human beings. So the great cloud was there to say that, hey, I am going to show you these visions of the things that are they are just about to happen. But this is what you are limited to. So you see, there are certain things, I am going to tell you this, and, and for, for whoever is going to bless you, even in our dreams and in our visions, even with the prophetic words that comes to us, 
these are certain things that we are being permitted to see but even when you see these things you have the power in you to decide what will happen and what will not happen because God has given you grace enough inside of you. He has given you the ability to make things happen. That is why he says that there is power in this tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. If you are being changed and being transformed in the inside of you. And then whatever comes out of you is the word of God that you are being pro you are proclaiming. That it means that you are, power you are powerful enough in your spirit man to change certain things for your favor. Hallelujah. So make good use of that. And then he said again, there was a fire unfolding in itself. And you see, the fire of God comes to purify. Let me take you, let me, let me take you, I think it was in Luke. The Bible says that Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. He was baptized with the Holy Spirit and he was baptized with fire. Most of us, we have the Holy Spirit. We have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. There with a manifestation of speaking in tongues. But we have not been yet baptized with the fire of God. Because you see, when the fire of the Lord comes on you, it will first change who you are. In the inside of you, it will purify you. And you, you, you see the word of God saying it again and again and again and again. It will work out in you patience. It will work out in you long suffering. It will work out in you how you handle certain things. It will transform you. So some of us, we are not ready for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because you see, you want people to see you burning. But they will burn and they will burn all those things inside of you. That does not glorify God. Thank you, my brother. It will come to purify you. For you to manifest the glory of the Lord. It will not be um, 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 death on, on your personality. It will transform you. It will make you anew. So that when you, when people see you, when you talk, when you do everything, anything that you do, it will be the Holy Spirit himself being manifested. Hallelujah. And so you see, the Bible continues to say that although we can't search the totality of God, we can relate his perfection through his perfection and manifestation <laughs> the glory of the divine being when we are being purified we are being put in a place that we can relate to the perfection of god because you see even in our flesh our spirit is being renewed every day so we stand in the place of humility we stand in a place of righteousness that god himself can pour into us Reveal himself into us and to use us for his glory hallelujah and then the amber it, it was so interesting to me. I just want to go quickly because now there are so many things I want to capture in this, this broadcast tonight. It says that the amber is the light of Christ. And the amber, you only find amber in this book of Ezekiel. And then the 1 verse 27, you don't see the amber in any part of the Bible. It doesn't emphasize it. But it has a different name. And, the, and it's all um, how it is explained shows the same color of amber but the word amber is only found in ezekiel and so he says that it is the pure light of christ who is the brightness of the father and his glory and the great strength and power so you see all these four things in one chapter was being revealed to ezekiel hallelujah that should tell you the power of what god was about to reveal unto him so the things that you are going through, how does that relate to you? Thank you for asking me that question. How does these things relate to me? Sometimes in your life, you are going, you, you feel like the things that you are going through, it's like a judgment. You are being judged. It's like you, you can't even put your hands in on why you are going through certain things that you are going through. And then you see like you are being purified. You are being sanctified. You are, you are being consecrated in your thoughts, in your way of life, in, in how you relate and how you perceive certain things. When you are going through these things as a child of God, I am here to tell you, then be ready to birth out certain things. Be ready to bring out forth the baby that God is himself being put inside of you. There is something that is about to break forth in your life. There is something that God is about to reveal unto you. There is another dimension of himself that he wants to reveal to you. Because you see, he will not let you experience all these things for naught. 
so now let us go into what god wants to reveal to us that we have to go through all these things for us to be receptive of what he was giving us and then the bible says from the fifth the, from the five also on out of the midst thereof came the likeliness of four living creatures hmm. and this was their appearance this was their appearance they had the likeliness of man when these things came and cleared the atmosphere now ezekiel was in the place to see what god intended for him to see and then in the verse 5, he's saying that then these proceed, the creatures, there were some creatures that God showed him. And the first one, he says, they had the likeliness of man. <laughs> and then my note says that the likeliness of these creatures came out of the fire. The fire is surrounded by the glory of God. And I have made emphasis for you that when you see these things happening in your life, then it means that be ready for the glory of the Lord. God is ready to manifest certain things unto you. And then they exhibit strength and the glory of God. We should be ready to be purified, which I have already said that. And so you see, let me continue from if Jesus is being from heaven in a blazing fire, then be ready. Yes, I think I'll give you this verse. It says that in 2 Thessalonians verse 1 and 7, and it says, if Jesus was revealed from heaven in a blazing fire, that is what Thessalonians said. Then be ready to be purified by fire of God. Say Jesus in Pona Yeshanisono. On he was revealed and purified by fire. He was baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire himself. Then you are no exception. <laughs> I didn't say it, it's in your Bible. <laughs> And then Exodus chapter 19, 18 says, God also descends in fire. I think that is all that I summarized. I'm just giving you the quotations to back it. And then, yes, it was in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, that the Holy Ghost baptized Jesus with himself and with fire. So now let us go. Through the fire, we learn to derive our source of strength. So it is saying again that when we are going through the fire, it, it gives us strength. And then he says the appearance of man. We are human beings. Pay, please pay attention. If you don't get anything, please get this one in your spirit. We are made to reign and rule like God. Because God... <laughs> yes, Erade, yes. <laughs> we are made to reign and rule like God. When God made us, he, the Bible, you and I know... That he said, I have made you in my image and likeliness. It's for it is not this 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 body image that God made. He was talking about your spirit man. He was talking about your spirit man. The spirit man that he commanded to have dominion. You only have this flesh because you cannot have dominion on this earth realm without a body. Get this in your spirit, I beg you. You cannot reign and have dominion without this body. That is why when demons and spirits that are not allowed on this earth realm, they need a human being to possess them to do certain things that they are not allowed to do. So that is why we say that a human being is possessed. That is, I'm not talking about demology, de demons here tonight. I am just pointing out something to you. That you are being made in the image and in the likeliness of God to have dominion. But it is in your spirit, man. You cannot have the dominion that God has made you to have in your body, in your flesh, in your own capacity. This thinking, this normal sound wisdom. You can only reign and have dominion in your spirit. So it is about time we learn to train our spirit man with the word of the Lord. It is about time we war in the spirit and have dominion in our spirit. You can only have victory in the spirit. And it will manifest in the flesh. A man of God taught us something. He's been a blessing to me in this season. 
and and then he says something powerful he said that we have been casting out demons but the demons that we cast out we do not ask them to return whatever thing that they have stolen from us so this is something that has been a blessing to me and when i have started beginning to pray with this <laughs> oh my god from zion so just imagine that you have been praying for your healing you have been having financial difficulty and you are commanding that demon that is in charge of that financial difficulty that 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 sickness in your body and you command that thing to get out of your house to get out of your body and it goes away when he is leaving he knows exactly where your healing is because he stole it from you god had already healed us he stole your money your worth the idea that god gave you he has stolen it and he has hidden it some he knows where it is and you have casted him out that he has no he has no he has no place in your life so he is gone when he is going you did not command him to bring back whatever thing that he has stolen from you and he is gone meanwhile the bible has already told us that when a thief is caught he is supposed to pay tenfold ten times fold of whatever thing that he has stolen so the next time you pray and you have casted that demon out that he is not allowed in your home tell that demon to go and bring back whatever thing that he has stolen from you i learned this principle and when he showed me this principle i've been praying it and i have seen the manifestation thereof i am not going to say it is my revelation because it is not but i have prayed it and i am seeing the re i'm seeing the result of that next time when something is tormenting you and you are you are commanding it out of your home tell that demon that spirit behind that thing to go and bring every single thing that he has stolen from you don't let them go scot free let them replenish every single thing that they have taken from you and this one is for free hallelujah don't let them go scot free at all they 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 are responsible for a lot of things and it is about time we let them repay everything, restore everything that they have taken from us. Every single thing. Amen. Let us continue. The Bible says they had the likeliness of man. They had the likeliness of man. And so this is what the, the word of the Lord wants us to know. That you have this body this flesh this body for the, this container so that you can operate in this earth realm like god because it is us that he gave us this dominion it is us that he gave us this this power to change certain things on this earth realm and that is why he has given us the will he says even i the lord i cannot do nothing unless you give me permission that is why even Jesus needed a womb before he can come on this earth realm. So if there is anything that is going to happen, you need to give it permission. You need to allow it. If a demon is tormenting you, if something is not right with you, you say that I have not given you permission. That is one way for you to pray. Because you have a will. Unless you allow him, he cannot use you against your will. That is why the Bible says when a person has a strong will, he can even take a city when a person has a strong will. Let us continue. And then he says in the verses, And everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like that of a sole of a cow's foot. And a calf's foot, sorry, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings and their four sides. And they found their faces on their wings. Please let me read this and then so that I can I can I can just flow with it. And the verse verse 9 says, Their wings were joined one to another. They turned uh, they turned not when they went, and they went everyone straight forward. 
for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man they had the face of a man and the face of a lion and the right side and the four had the face of an ox on the left side they they four also had the face of an eagle so the verse that he just saying how they they had wings they had hands they were joined together and they walk in a straight path and then he's also making an emphasis that all these creatures they had a face of a man they had a face of an ox they have a face of a lion and they had a face of a flying eagle and so probably this is really my main thing that i wanted to talk about but if i am not able to finish we'll continue on this next week because this is very important you see this the first one is the face of the lion and you see it says that no the face of the man to give us understanding of who we are in the spirit and then the face of the lion means it gives us strength and boldness to excel strength and boldness to excel and then the ox excels in excellence in diligence and in patience the ox has a strength beer <laughs> the animal he is tamed he's trained but the bible says that his strength is to excel in diligence and in patience and unwarily discharge the work he has to do on break he doesn't know what to say he said i am tired some of us when we are doing the work of the lord do baby i like we we are we are we are engraved in our spirit and i mean every day it's me that i should do this every day is me i have to be and nobody even acknowledges me and all that the ox doesn't do that and then the bible says that the eagle is in quickness and piercing sight and soaring high that is what the eagle does and then the bible says that these angels have wings let me just explain what when you get the time please read it and then I'll, i'm giving you this understanding as you read you get this understanding the bible says that these eagles in angels or these creatures have wings meaning that whatever god sends them to do they waste no time the wings that they have is that they do not waste time in executing what god has given them you see when god gives you something to do that is not the time for you to start asking questions hey how am i going to do this or how am i going to do that which i i i i, I found guilty doing that but god has given me the grace to do what i am doing the wings that god gives you if you want to fly if you want to do excel in what god has given you do not mama when he tells you do do something do it quickly execute it because he has given you the strength of the ox. He has given you a foresight of the eagle. And then he says that they stand straight. They have the hands. They have hands. And it means that they stand straight, firm, and they are steady. When you do what God has purposed for you to do, the Bible says that you stand firm. You stand straight in what you are doing. You don't, mama, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't shiver. You are steadfast in what you are doing. You have the strength to do it. Because you see, God is the one doing it through you. You have given him your will. So he is doing it through you. It is no more you. You are just a vessel. I hope it, this is blessing somebody. And then he says something. He says that they have wings not only for motion. Not only for you to fly, not only for you to do whatever God has given you to do, but the hands is for action. And you see, this is the part that really caught my attention. I said, God help me. He says, many people are quick, but they are not active. Hallelujah. He says, this, this, this is not just for motion, but your hands is for action as well. And he's just telling us some people, they are quick. Hey, when the vision come, hey, but they don't do nothing about it. You are quick. You are quick to receive the prophecy. You are quick for, for, for you to have the mysteries. But when you have it, what are you doing with it? 
so how how will we, how can you can we have been i have been reading this i have been getting but this time around there was another dimension of understanding that i was getting from this and oh my god help me sometimes i'm so quick to accept it i am so quick to receive this but what do i do with it when god speaks to you what are you doing with it when you get that revelation that you are supposed to bless somebody with what are you doing with that revelation God help us, forgive us all. Forgive us. And then he says this again. They hurry about but do nothing to purpose. When God gives you a revelation, it's in line with the purpose, the call that he has called you, what he wants you to do, whatever thing that he's giving you, it is in line with purpose. So when you do nothing about it, the Bible says you are, you, you are, you are, listen. I said something about transition this month and I'm going to hammer this in this, this season, this period right now. Because I have seen, I have been talking to people and with my own friends and we have seen this thing coming in over and over again. Oh, I, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. You see, there is, there is these four things that the Lord as we were praying and then the Lord laid this on my heart. He said transition. And he said that the first one will be batons being given. And people are going to give batons to the other people following them. But the danger of that baton is that he says some people, they will be forced out of their position. They would not even know that the mantles have been taken away from them to give to the other person. And then he says that for the, the second group of category of people, they are going to give them the grace to begin something anew. And I hope that God will give people chances to do what they refused to do some years back. As he, 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 I, I found grace in his sight for, for me to do what I had been refusing to do all these years. But some of you, if you are not careful, you will not have the chance to do what God has called you to do. And so it is a very dangerous place for you to be in this season. And then the third kind of people, he says, those who are in the middle of doing something, those who are in the process of doing something, I am going to quicken them and give them acceleration to finish what they are doing. And then the last kind of people are those who are about to finish. And then he says that I'm going to give them the spirit of speed to finish what they have already started. So you see, he's also pointing to us that this, everything that I give you is in line with the purpose that I have called you to. And then he says again, when we go straight, we go forward. Hallelujah. When you are, you are focused, when you know that this is what God has called you to do, when you know that this is what I am, I am anointed to do, you keep your focus, you move forward. You move forward because you are not looking, you are not distracted by what somebody else is doing. You are not distracted about what is going on around you. Your eyes is on the cross. Your, your eyes is just forward and you are moving forward. And so you, all that you know to do is to move forward because your eyes is on God and his purpose for you. So just move forward. And then he says again, they made no mistakes. Hallelujah. When you keep your eyes on the Lord, when you keep your eyes on your purpose, you do not, you, your mistakes are limited. And even when you do something that is wrong, because you are in line with the Holy Spirit, you have aligned your life with the Holy Spirit. He will prompt you there and there that this thing is not right. Correct it. This thing is not for me. Correct it. And that is one of the things that you see, if you do not have that, I pray that when you, these days when you are praying, begin to ask the Holy Spirit to correct you in your mistakes. Let him be, let him be the one who teaches you and corrects you. Some of us, we do not know the correction of the Holy Spirit. Even when he is prompting us, we are so deaf not to even listen. But if you know the correction of the Holy Spirit, my brother, my sister, when something, you do something that is not right, even when something is beginning to pick up in your spirit, like, like, um, like Cain, the Bible says, sin is knocking at your door, master it. That is what God told him. And that was when he began to realize, God told him, hey, be careful because, you know, jealousy and pride is beginning, beginning to will something, plant something inside of you. My time is far spent, but I wish I can get to some place so that we can continue tomorrow, next week. And then he, he says this. 
they made less mistakes yes they turn not from their business to strive to strive with anything there is no distraction for you. And they say they follow the leadings of the Holy Spirit. That is the verse 13. And he saw them in their own light. Hallelujah. Their love for God, fervent zeal in their service. He said that. Excuse me. When Ezekiel saw them, he saw these creatures in their own light. He did not see them in the light of God. You know, it is God that, that produces light. Like, you see some in Revelation. Let me use Revelation. Most of the time, you see Revelation. And the Bible says that they saw God and the brilliance of God threw light on other things or other creatures around them. But this thing, the Bible says that Ezekiel saw these creatures in their own light. What does that tell you? The Bible says that we are... Lesser, we are like the lesser light. We are being compared like the lesser light because God is the greater light. But you see, as we are following Him, as we are, the Bible says we are changed from glory to glory. We are being transformed to be more like Him. And now you become you you become a light in your own capacity. You are glorious in your own. What people see, they see your own light, and they are attracted to the God in the inside of you. You are able to transmit the glory and the righteousness of God. Because you see, in as much as God can entrust you with some certain power, he knows that you will not abuse what he has entrusted in you. And I hope somebody is catching this. If God can entrust you with his power, he can entrust you with his, his works, with, 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 with his purpose, and he knows you will execute it. He entrusts you with the kind of abilities that would also draw people into the kingdom of light. And I pray that whoever is under the sound of my voice, you will press in to know this kind of power. Let me just summarize these ones that are left. He says the four faces of this creature stand for the four gospels. And you see... <laughs> The Gospels tells us the different aspects of Jesus. It's so interesting that as I was studying this, yeah, <laughs> the Matthew, I, I realized something. So I'm just, please, can I, how many more minutes can I, can I spend so that I can, I can know how to, <laughs> I don't know how, how many more minutes can you, can you give me so that I can run it up? Please just type it here. I can see it so that I can run it up. I don't want to spend too much of your time. The four creatures, these faces that we saw, the face of the man, the face of the eagle, the face of the lion, and then the face of the ox. These faces also represent the four gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I didn't know that until when I was studying it. So the wisdom of God tells us that you see all these books, let me just pick one or two things. The book of Matthew is a figurative, is figuratively portrays the face of a lion. They, they say it portrays Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. That was more of the emphasis, emphasis, emphasis on the book of Matthew. The book of Luke, the gospel of Luke also Emphasis on Jesus as the servant king. Hmm. He was the greatest amongst us, yet he was the one who served. And then the book of Luke, which 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 the mark also um, amplif um, uh, <laughs> signifies the face of the ox. And then the book, the gospel of Luke also signifies the face of the man, which also shows that Christ as a man, how he himself came as a man, that he suffered all kinds of things so that he can identify. The Bible says we do not have an high priest who cannot identify with our, 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 our infirmities or our weakness. And everything because he was a man like us he is able to identify with us please let me do justice with it thank you auntie Anne. let me do justice with it so know that the richness of this test can come out and then he says that John also uh, um, depicts the face of the eagle and then 
eagle as he and then that says figuratively figuratively the son of god and then john shows the divinity of god god dwelling in his son among us it 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 shows it was it was only john who started introducing jesus as in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god it shows us how divine jesus was matthew talked about and then um, um joseph begot mary and mary begot uh, what what the genealogy of jesus so you see all these kind these different gospels and these faces of these animals you can't just take matthew and think that you can know about jesus you can't just take look and think that you can know the totality of who jesus really is you need all these four gospels for you to know who the man jesus is the jesus of nazareth who came the son of god who came to 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 be birth in this earth realm you have to take all these four gospels for you to know who he really is but even then you cannot know who he really is because the bible says that whatever thing that all the things that he did was not was not able to be contained in the bible and that is why the word of god is spirit you read it and you need the breath of the holy spirit to bring it alive and to bring it more illumination and understanding but why is it so important also that the God himself wants us to know that they are faces of these animals that I can use to relate to these four gospels that you as a human being that I have made you in my own image. What is God trying to tell us this evening? This is what God is telling you and me as I put I bring my 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 message to a close. He's saying that I made you with 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 the with the characteristics of a human being you are you have the body you have the flesh you can feel you have your senses for you to be able to operate in this earth realm to have this dominion you are being given a flesh and a body this one is not going to go to heaven but it is able for you to equip you your spirit man to operate on this earth realm but you see, he always tells us that in as much as you need the body, do not let this flesh rule over your spirit. Don't say, oh, um, um, the Bible says that I cannot sin. How is it possible I am in this flesh, I cannot sin? Yes, you dare not sin because the Bible says that the seed of God is inside of you. So sin has no dominion over you. You cannot sin. Even when you do something that is wrong, the Bible says because Jesus has already paid the price, what you do is just go and say, Father, I am sorry and move on. Because when he sees you, he sees only Jesus. He only sees the Christ, the anointed one inside of you. That is what he sees. And so that is what the, man, the face of the man signifies. And he says, I have made you. I have given you the capacity the capacity of the ox. The ox is a tough animal. When you read the characteristics of the ox, the Bible, it says, it says that the ox, he is being trained how to follow instructions. The ox has been trained how to, how to carry tough, difficult task. He is the one. Who, who, who knows how to handle, how to, how to follow where he needs to go. He has the strength. He is diligent in what he does. And he excels. He makes sure that it is done. When you have the, char the character of an ox, sometimes you think, people may think, or you might think that people are taking you for granted, or you are not being appreciated. But I am here to tell you something that God placed that character trait in you because he knows what he wants to do with the purpose he has placed over your life. And so with all of us, he is telling us that, hey, sometimes you have to arise in your spirit like that of an ox because you have a strength that is beyond this normal understanding. You can identify if you are a woman here, you can identify this with me. Sometimes the things that we go through as women, things that we go through as wives, 
when you hear a story of a wife, when you hear a story of somebody, you're like, how can this person hold on to this? But you see, God has given us a strength, a tenacity to do certain things. And that is the strength of an ox. That is the face of an ox. And the second, he says, I have given you that of a lion, the boldness of a lion. The lion rules and the Lord gave us dominion. And then he says, I have given you dominion over every creeping thing. See, he gave us dominion over this earth. All the spirits and all the demons, he has given you dominion. But if you do not see it in the word of the Lord, how can you tell it? That is why you need to spend time in the word. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to seek the word and the direction of God concerning your life in this season. And when you have received the instruction of the Lord, that is when you walk boldly and do what God has given, commissioned you to do. If you have, if you are steadfast, you, if you, you are convinced in your spirit, man, that this is what God has called me to do. This is where God is placing me. Then you have no excuse than to arise like that of a lion and possess what God has given you. Joshua said, I am old. Caleb, sorry, it was Caleb who said, I am old, but I am well able to possess this because this land was promised to me. Hallelujah. That is the face of a lion. Arise and possess what God has given you because you are well able. And that of the eagle, the face of the eagle. You are able to discern from higher heights. You are able to tap in to what God is doing in the spirit. You are able to discern that, hey, this is not right. This is right. This is of God. This is not of God. He has given you that character, that anointing on you as a child of God. And so you see, it is about time for us to arise in our spirit man and to do all these things. If Jesus needed all these things to work on this earth realm, then you are not exempted. So if eh, maybe you knew, maybe you did not know, but if even you knew, God is just reminding you that this is the seasons that you need to arise and to possess the land that I have given you. This is the time that you need to walk and have dominion like the, 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 the man that I have made you. A God man. You are God in this body. You have total dominion on this earth realm. Hallelujah. I hope you are catching this in your spirit. You are like God, but you only reign in your spirit. But you have this because you have dominion. It is this body that gives you access in this, spirit, in this earth realm. And then he says, arise with the strength of an ox. Arise in your spirit and be bold like the lion to do what you have been called to do. And then he's saying again that you are the eagle. You can perceive what is happening and take charge. Hallelujah. So this is the word of the Lord for us tonight. I know in the end, I, the, but this is what God really wants us to know. And so as, as I would just, I don't know, I don't think this will come clearly. But this was a last minute of my notes that you can see here. The north, the south, the east and the west. It represents the, the, the four corners of the earth. And then it says that um, when you go to the north, it represents the eagle. Then, then Dan, and then, um, yeah, I, 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 when, when God permits me next week, if I have to continue on this, I will continue. But if not, there is another thing. I hope that this really has been a blessing to you. So for a few minutes, as I am ending this, you are more than a conqueror. And I know that you have been blessed with this broadcast and something that was lying in the inside of you has caught the fire of God for you to arise and to possess the land that God has given you. So for a few minutes, why don't you lift up your voice? You know where God has spoken to you. Now that the grace of the Lord is right here with us, I want you to begin to pray and ask God, the Holy Spirit, you have sent forth your word to me today and I have received it. Whichever part that blessed you, whichever part that is challenging you, ask the Holy Spirit to give you the grace for you to use this word not only just a hearer he says he's the one does some of us we are quick to receive it but we are not active 
So begin to pray wherever you are. Thank God for this word. And begin to pray that, Lord, help me to be a doer of this word and not just a hearer only. In the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word has come in the power that it has come. I give you all the honor and I give you all the praise. I exalt you. I bless you, Father. I thank you for this word. May I be active, O oh Lord, in hearing your word to execute what you have called me to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be lazy. I will not be distracted to what you want me to do in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please stay with me. When we finish, I'll be ministering in a few minutes before we go. I would like to pray for some few people before we go. Shiada bla pasoka da da da, shende ba hasonda hasiande, shiada bla pasoke de be de be, shianda da da da, le masoka hasiande, shiada bla pasoka da hasiande da da, ye de ba sonda hasiende de de, yada bla pasoka da da da. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bless you and I give you praise. Thank you. You also pray for me because I'll be very honest with you. When I'm on Facebook Live, it is very challenging for me to prophesy. God, I'm being, that is my gospel, it's, it's the honest truth. When I'm doing Facebook Live, it's very difficult for me to do that. But I am going to be obedient. And as the Lord leads, I will just minister his word. And... His spirit is right here with us. He has spoken to us. And his words always proceed with signs and wonders. And so even before we, we, we started it, my brother, um, I am I, I, glad that I asked you to stay with me tonight. Because just before we started, that was what the Holy Spirit was telling me. And so my brother Kuku, this is the word of the Lord for you. He says, I am going to open up a new contract for you. There is a contract coming your way. Whether it's if you are already expecting it or you are in the in the process of signing a new contract, the word of the Lord says, I am bringing you a new contract. If you have started something, then God is going to seal that contract for you in the name of Jesus. And so, Heavenly Father, I bless you and I seal this new deal for my brother Kuku and his family and his partners in the mighty name of Jesus. We protect that contract. No demon in hell can touch what you, Lord, have ordained before the foundation of the earth. And I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so I also pray for my sister. Um, um, I hope I get this name right. But it's... Um, <laughs> I can see your face on the... Um, 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 with the heart. I, I sent you a message that you, you should join me. Um, barista... If I get it wrong, but you are the one I, I am talking to my sis, I, I asked you to join me tonight. As as I saw you there, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said that I am giving you new beginnings, new beginnings, new beginnings. And so I, I, I pray that for you, even though, even when he gave this word of transition, and so I'm also receiving this in my spirit and I, I pray this over your life that may this season be new beginnings for you. Usher you to another realm in the spirit. May you see signs. May you see certain things that you have never dreamt that you could see about the nature and the character of God. Whatever thing that you have purpose to do in this season, may God himself grant you the grace to do it. May he overtake you himself, not in your own strength, but by the spirit of the Lord himself, push you to realms that you did not dream you can even go. And so I thank you that as you hunger for him, may he himself pour 
more of himself into you i am careful with what i'm saying because this is what the holy spirit wants to say unto you and so i thank god for new beginnings for you another realm of himself as you press in may he himself teach you even as you take the word to study may he reveal his mysteries unto you as you seek him and as you seek him you will find him also in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i thank you and so my sister charity god bless you for joining me gifty you have been with me god bless you mr kwesi che kwache god bless you um, um i'm going to end here i've taken most of your time kuku god bless you for being with me god bless you i i appreciate you when i see you, you see the anointing how it flows it flows easily for me <laughs> And so I, I let us just pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you when I give you praise and honor. I glorify you for what you have done tonight in our midst. May this word that has come to us, oh Lord, help us to be the doer of your word. It is not just enough for us to hear it, but let us, we have heard it, oh Lord. May we be the doer. Do what you want us to do so that we can see the manifestation of your glory. We give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. We bless you and we thank you that you are with us. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. I bless you Holy Spirit and I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. So for my Melinda, God bless you. I was I couldn't find you but hey I know you are here. You have always been with me. God bless you for staying with me, my sis. God bless you. Thank you very much. And please, Auntie Kathy, thank you. To God be the glory. Please, um, I, I would encourage you. You can share this broadcast. Uh, host it on your page. It will be a blessing to the body of Christ. We all need to be um, reminded of what who God has made us to be, to arise and to do what he wants us to do in this season. And so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and, and keep sharing. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Keep praying for me too. I need more prayers. So thank you again. Have a good night. God bless you and shalom. Amen. <laughs>